Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. So check this out. Neanderthal Denisovan ancestors interbred with the distantly related hominin. So that distantly related hominin they're referring to is called a super archaic a population of, of ancient humans that lived well over two million years ago. Um, and I'll show you guys a few I'll show you guys a visual in a second. Neanderthals and Denisovans interbred with these uh archaic this archaic this super archaic population, but they're the ancestors of Neanderthals and Denisovans. I'll just call them Neandersovans, which is what this um this uh, research article refers to them as. They also interbred with this super archaic population as well. So there's a lot of things that come up in here. But before we actually go deep into um, into the study, let's just hash out exactly what an evolutionary geneticist seeks to do, which is they gather all these hominin genomes over the course of a few years, as well as others borrowed from other studies and previous studies. And then they compare and look for mutations and shared genes and all of these other uh, genetic patterns uh, among this genome. And then they apply statistical methods that infer the history of ancient human populations. So again, inferring the history is well up, uh, is basically a matter of opinion, educated opinion, I guess, hypothesis, and up for interpretation. And that, of course, is the battlefield in which all of this is fought and debated. And again, this article, many of you will have come away with many different opinions, but I think it's very interesting. And again, um, it's just another puzzle piece that that we're adding here to really clear up the picture of what really happened. And it appears, no matter how, which way you slice it, things happened further and further back in history. So let's just take a look at the abstract really quick. The ancestors of Neanderthals and Denisovans interbred with their own Eurasian predecessors, the ar- super archaic population aforementioned. The super archaic population was large with an effective size between 20 and 50,000 individuals. And they just derived that from analyzing the genome. So three things are, co- or five things are confirmed here. So one, Denisovans also interbred with super archaics. Neanderthals and Denisovans separated early in the Pleistocene which is about 700,000 years ago or so, 750,000 years ago. Their their ancestors endured a bottleneck of population size, which basically means there is a huge decline in population for some reason, and it's usually sudden. And it probably has to do with climate or some sort of catastrophe or uh, plague, whatever it is, but a huge sudden decrease in population size. Uh, for Neanderthal population was large at first, but then declined in size as well. Um, and then five Neanderthals interbred with the ancestors of modern humans, which uh, we've talked about in previous episodes. So here's the tree here. And you can see on the right, um, if this is all of our common ancestors, modern Africans, Europeans, Neanderthals, Denisovans, and super archaics, you can see the super archaics branched off pretty early. So uh, between the time that these super archaics branched off and then the Denisovans and Neanderthals allegedly branched off, it's a period of 1.2 million years. This line here represents about 1.2 million years. So at this point, the super archaics interbreed with the Neanderthal Denisovan ancestors, not even the Neanderthal and Denisovans, but their ancestors, the Neandersovans. Seven allegedly they did this 744,000 years ago, which again that's an interesting date, right? I've mentioned it a few episodes uh, for the past few episodes. So around that time, a couple things happened. One, large-brained hominin appear in the fossil record, and two, Acheulean stone tools show up in the fossil record as well. So all this, again, this diversification, this sudden explosion of humans happens around this time but before then we had these super archaics as well someone left a a very interesting comment in one of the videos and he was saying and i i totally uh, agree with what he says that perhaps sometime in the remote past there was one type of human 
or a broad type of human and they inhabited the earth and then they went to all corners of the earth something terrible happened it shattered the earth and moved everything around and these uh, in response this original broad human or the super archaic let's say they split off they diversified um, but they were always able to interbreed no matter uh no matter how much time has passed and that has been the crux of the conflict here because the question of what always was well how long do two uh, distinct human populations have to be separated before they create their own species to the point where they can't have viable offspring well the answer to that ha now has to be longer than 1.2 million years it has to be longer than 1.2 million years why because these super archaics after they branched off 1.2 million years later they mate with this neandersovan population and they still had viable offspring so again how long does it take if you guys listen to the grimerica episode darren was talking about how he thinks adaptation there are many different it takes many 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 years of adaptation in order to get to the point of evolution that's what he was saying a lot of people have issues with with that perspective but it, it does make sense on paper but now that this has come out man i don't know how much time does it really take is that is it even possible um, so again, let, uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think about that. Uh, these Neanderthals and Denisovans, they separated much earlier than previously thought and proposed a bottleneck uh, population size. So it's documented that the earliest known interbreeding event between ancient human populations um, happened 700,000 years ago. That is now docu uh, documented. And by the way, this super archaic human, these super archaics, they, I, I wonder if they're just Homo erectus, but if it was Homo erectus, then it would have come out in the genome. So it could be uh, some sort of um, hominin that temporary with Homo erectus, or they could, they could very well be older than Homo erectus. So again, that's something to think about as well. We're just shedding light on an interval in human evolutionary history that was previously completely dark. Yeah, this, like I said, this is a huge puzzle piece in, in um, really shaping wh where we came from and what our evolutionary history was. So how does this affect out of Africa and interbreeding? Um, Rogers, who, who is uh, the evolutionary geneticist involved in this study, what he did was he took a look at the mutations uh, shared amongst Africans and Europeans and ancient De Neanderthals and Denisovans, so, so those four groups. And then he found the pattern, which implied five episodes of interbreeding, so one that was previously unknown. So he confirmed four episodes and then the, the one, basically what, what I read in the abstract earlier. Uh, the newly discovered episode involves interbreeding over the 700,000 year uh, ago boundary that I mentioned a bunch of times. And the super archaic population separated from all other humans two million years ago. Okay, two million years ago is when it separated. So if we go back here, this entire line is two million years. But then up until this point, this orange line, this is 1.2 million years. I hope that makes sense. Again, with the ancestors of Neanderthals and Denisovans. So the super archaic and Neanderthal Denisovan ancestor populations were more distantly related than any other pair of human populations previously known to interbreed. So again, that's a huge distance. One would have thought before this that it w maybe they could breed, but they, they wouldn't have viable offspring, but they did. Um, and this is what he said. These findings about the timing at which interbreeding happened in the human lineage is telling something about how long it takes for reproductive isolation to evolve. So that's, that's basically what I've been getting at, reproductive isolation. How long does a species have to be uh, in isolation before it can't reproduce anymore? And, and they just move on and, and evolve into something completely different. Well, <laughs> like I said, it's way older than they thought, um, if at all. And again, the two million years ago when the super archaic separated agrees with human fossil evidence in Eurasia that is 1.85 million years old. Um, it doesn't go into specifics about that, 
but they, th- this is just one instance in which archaeological evidence and genetic ev- evidence seems to coincide and uh, be at the very least parallel with each other in terms of human origins. Uh, researchers also pr- uh, proposed there were three waves of human migration into Eurasia. Now, this is where it gets really hazy, and I don't really have an opinion either way. It's just very interesting to see where all of this is leading to in light of out of Africa, into Africa, and all that stuff, out of Australia, all of this stuff. So this article is saying... Act, well, they, they're proposing that three waves of human migration into Eurasia. The first was two million years ago. The second was 700,000 years ago, um, which is the one that uh, I've talked about a lot, and especially lately, and Bruce Fenton was talking about when, he, when I had him on. And the third one was the one 50,000 years ago that we all know, uh, which is when we allegedly uh, uh, interbred with Neanderthals for the first time uh, 50,000 years ago. So... So these are the three, I guess, mainstream now um, views in terms of uh, human migrations uh, into Eurasia or back into Africa. It, again, it's really hard to tell where they were coming and where they're going because people move all across the globe very quickly. And genetics, is, although it really does help with the migrations, it's really hard to tell if they were coming and going. And that's going to be the site of this um of this ideological battle that we're going to fight for a while until all this gets cleared up. And again, there's probably going to have to be a lot more evidence that comes out. Another thing interesting was um, the date 600,000 years ago. Neanderthals were already a distinct lineage, separate not only from modern lineage, but also from Denisovan. So that kind of puts the kibosh on, on the, well, according to this data any, anyway, that kind of puts the kibosh on Neanderthals being about 300, 350,000 years ago. So 600,000 years ago, Neanderthals were already their own thing. And then only 100,000 years before that is when their ancestors were breeding. So 100,000 years after this breeding event, this interbreeding event, you have fully formed Neanderthals and Denisovans. And probably a bunch of other humans who that we haven't yet to um, discover, um, like the the ghost uh, genetics, uh, the ghost genes that that I talked about in the last episode. Um, so anyway, let me know what you guys think about this. Um, the, this, I wanted to cover this one because they found a fully intact Neanderthal skeleton in uh, Iraq, I think, or Iran. Um, I, I, I still need to look into that. Um, I'll, I'll di- deep dive into that tomorrow. Um, but this is very interesting. It's, and all this is just coming out um, very within a few days of each other. So um, I wanted to get to this earlier in the week. Um, I, basically right when I uh, came across the article. But I, I've just been busy with work and stuff. But um, I'm glad I got, I got to um, finally get to it now. So uh, let me just pull this up again. So let me know what you guys think about this, guys. Um, Again, 750,000 years ago, super archaics breed with Neandersovans. And then 419,000 years ago, they interbreed again with Neanderthals and Denisovans. And then not long after that, the Neanderthals and Denisovans find us, our ancestors, Uh, And then the ancestors, and then they do again 50,000 years ago, and then 30,000 years ago, allegedly. Um, Denny Sullivan's a modern Europeans anyway, 30,000 years ago. Um, Let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, What, how does this shape your opinion now? Uh, What do you guys think about the modern Africans and that ghost uh, genome of in the West Africans? How does this all fit in? And was that uh, um, that commenter, I forget your name, I'm sorry, but that commenter's hypothesis, what, how he broke it down in his, uh, in his response to my last video, do you think there was some sort of broad, regu- I guess, far ubiquitous human, for lack of a better word, I guess you can call it a super archaic, um, and then it we were just they were all closely related they spread out and then they they adapted to their environments they specialize and specialize 
but they still kept the same chromosome number. They were still able to uh, have, um, uh, despite all the climate change and despite all the catastrophic uh, shit that happened in that time, in those mil millions of years, uh, do you think that we do you think that they never passed the point of no return in terms of the evolutionary tree? Meaning, do you think they always had that ability to reproduce no matter how much time passes? A human is a human is a human no matter how much time? Or do you guys think it, the number is just a little bit further than 1.2 million? Anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think and I'll talk to you guys later.